Hello there, Chris Ball and Installation Specials. Right, today we're taking out what we call a wall star boiler. This is it here. Big cast iron lump. The thing about these boilers, they're serviceable from outside. So all the burner, etc., is outside. So you take the casing off, reveal your burner, and you service it from outside. So what we're doing here, we're fitting light for light. We're gonna go for a wall star two high efficiency condensing boiler, back in the same place. Exactly the same setup, burn on the outside, service all the outside. Now the thing with this, we've got to send a sender cable upstairs. So Gordon here is doing some electrics to make sure we've got power upstairs because we have no control over the hot water. There's a motorizer out for the heating, but there's nothing for the hot water. So I'll show you a video of that in a minute. But, um, so when the boiler's on, heating's on, it goes around the hot water, there's no temperature control. Just relies on the border foam that it's inefficient, the hot water will come out scalding hot, it's not very really safe at all. So we're going to sort all that out, I'll put the motor riser out on, sit in the thermostat, 55 degrees set out, so it will send, as soon as that hot water reaches 55 degrees, the boiler will send the signal to switch it all off. So I'm just going to make it more efficient, wire boiler, the motor riser valves, more and more efficient. So we're going to get that all sorted and it makes an easy job. Right, we're upstairs now. And what we've got, we've got not a very well controlled heating system. So, got my little bag of checks here. I've got must be fire valve, fire safety valve. This goes by the boiler on the outside. And if there is a fire, then this will automatically switch off the oil supply. Okay, so that's that. We've got an oil filter going on. We always had a secondary filter, you have a filter on the tank nine times out of ten in the old tank, but we always had a secondary filter just to protect that nozzle on the burner. Okay, so what we've got here, these are our motorized valves, that's the auto bypass valve, we've got a new pump going in, similar thermostat, automatic bypass valve. So, for the electrics, take these off. We've got to send the cable, we've got to make sure we've got a permanent line moving to an up here because we're going to have a wiring centre here, okay? And that wiring centre is going to be for each motorised valve. We'll put a new pump in. It's going to be for our Hive smart thermostat and our cylinder thermostat as well. So, the problem with this, we have one motorised valve. Obviously on the heating, it's just obvious to me, it's on the heating. That goes to your radiators. Nothing on your hot water, nothing at all. So when you've got your heating on, it goes like this to open up, it actually doesn't work. That's because just flips it over in the open and made new position. But when the customer puts the heating on, what's gonna happen is this valve will open, it'll go around the heating, but, there's no valve here, no motorized valve here. So it's automatically going around the hot water coil. So when you've got your heating on, there's no control over the hot water, it's gonna be scalding, boiling hot, which is obviously no good, it's not safe. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a new pump on, we're gonna put a motorized valve here, we're gonna put a new motorized valve here. So when, and we're gonna wire it up, so, when our hot water, is on, this will open up, go around there, and as soon as it's reached 55 degrees, this will tell this to turn off, and send a signal to turn the turn off, okay? So the hot water's now fully controlled at the bottom. We have a new one there, so in the future, when the heating's on, as long as we've got an eyes out there, it's not gonna go around that cold, so it's not gonna give you that boiling hot, scalding water. It's always gonna be set at 55, it will not go above that. And we have an auto fire pass. So if the boiler was to drop below five degrees, the pump will come on automatically. And in that case, if these valves, if, if the thermostats are turned down, the heating and the hot water uh, are off on the hive, say, or they reach temperature, then this is a valve which will tee into here before the valves into the return. That's a route back to the boiler. And the reason for that on previous videos if we don't have this and the boiler fires up, it drops on the frost protection. We won't take it off that pump to burn out. Okay, so always add all your devices that you need. Make the system a lot more efficient, a lot more safer. 
and you can't go wrong with okay. it. We're all piped up here. Okay, so we've added our microwave valve for the hot water. Brand new one for the heating. Brand new pump. Automatic bypass valve, which I explained earlier. Okay, so, if your pump's getting on a little bit, so over 10 years old, what I'd say is, we always give a quote over to the customer. They're about 160 quid. They don't earn no money on the pump. It's just always, we always like to know that, um, you got all new controls, don't get worse than your boiler breaking down. Getting the manufacturers out and they confirm it's not the actual boiler, it's one of these controls. So it's always it's quite annoying for the customer if the boiler, you know, if this doesn't work, the boiler's not gonna work. Things like this, these are um, not gonna work either. There's always good best practice to, to change all the components, pump, otherwise valves, and then you can't really go wrong then. So change all them and you're set up for the future of your brand new boiler, okay? So it's all good, what we're gonna do, just doing the wiring here. Cut these all cables back so it's nice and neat. Okay, put them in there. So nothing sort of like no cables or exposed or anything. And you just carry on doing your wiring. Get it all nice and neat. Cables all tight, don't want them all flopping all over the place. Get all nice and tight in your wiring centre. All your lives, all your neutrals, etc. All your uh, switch lives, commons, all it is. This is our cylinder film stack, we're going to put around the cylinder, put a strap for that, strap around the cylinder nicely. That's about it really, so do it all right, wire it up all correctly obviously, get all your new components in, sign it off and you can't, really can't go wrong. Right, that's the last part of the casing, coming off the boiler, see where it's all been made of expanding foam and whatnot. Okay, no problem. So that's all that. So you can see the hole, which is up there. Nice big hole. Sometimes when we're changing the boiler position, we'll just brick all that up. Uh, we bash in bricks and block it up on the inside for the glass to finish, but obviously it won't start going back in. So um, it's all good. And uh, get the new boiler on. Okay, all done. Air comes all done, reconfigured, wired in, all done lovely. Boiler's all done, obviously utilise that same hole. I had to open up a little bit, but boiler's all done, casing's on, all tested. If I show you outside, so obviously for servicing, as I said earlier, servicing all from out here. And there you go. So on this one, secondary oil filter, fire safety valve, and there you go. There's your flue, there's your burner. There's your, there's your finished casing. So, what you got to do to reveal the uh, burner, flathead screws, just loosen them, hook it off, and it will reveal your burner for servicing in the future. Obviously with a service, after 12 months, change the nozzle, change the old hose, clean it out, job done. Nice and easy. As I say, this is all signed off and um, handed over to the customer. Always put a nice bead, a mastic around there. But obviously there's a slight little gap, I don't want that getting back into the cavity. So a slight little bead of mastic all the way round, and it's all done. Thank you very much.